Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to continue our Ace Attorney journey by heading to the big top. Apparently, this is what a lot of people consider to be, like, from what I heard, the worst case of the original games, or maybe the entire series. So, uh, that'll be interesting to experience. Then again, I heard a lot of people also dislike uh, Turnabout Sisters and Rise from the Ashes. So it'll be interesting to experience this for myself. Will I actually dislike it, or will I somehow find it to be good in my heart? Either way, let's head on once again into Justice for All and see what's turning about at the big top. Let us see. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show. Prepare to witness a man who has mastered the wonder of flight. That is a creepy lion mouth. And that is a creepy man. The world's greatest magician, the one, the only, Maximilian Galactica. This is some bopping music for a man who's flying through the through the air. And then he disappeared. Is his body gonna end up at the bottom? Oh my god, he's dead! Oh, that's it. <laughs> okay, so there's gonna be a crime at a circus. Okay. December 26th. Well, at least it won't be uh, almost Christmas Eve again this time. 8, 12 p.m., Berry Big Circus. Oh, no, we're, we're, we are at the circus. Are we at the circus? We are at the circus! Oh, okay, I did not expect this, so there's... Then again, I guess, considering how the last case went, I suppose being present for the murder isn't all that crazy. <laughs> Wow, that was like being in a dream. I haven't even caught my breath yet. <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it, Pearly? It was great. There was a dancing bear, and a tiger that jumped through a ring of fire, an elephant that rode on a giant ball, not to mention the guy who flew through the air. That is an adorable animation. Yeah, Max Galactica. He was absolutely fabulous. Huh? What? Max? Max Galactica, the world's greatest magician. A ma a magic -ition? No, a magician. Um, Mr. Nick? Huh? What is it, Pearls? Does magic have anything to do with channeling spirits? I don't think it has anything to do with channeling. You don't know about magic, do you, Pearls? I'm sorry. But when's the crime gonna happen? I braved the winter cold and took pearls to see the circus. It's been six months since the terrible incident at Incurane Village, and it was during that trying time that I met Pearls. Thankfully, she seems to be recovering from it and is returning to her normal self. Ah, uh, it's time to go. You're right, we can't miss the last train. Pearls, remember the train? Of course I did. But I don't really understand what everyone means by express train. Well, Nick, see you later. I'll come by to help clean up the office. It's got to be spotless for the new year. Don't worry about it, really. You're going to visit Mr. Nick on New Year's? Maybe. I'm glad you'll get to spend your New Year's with your special someone. Pearly, look, it's time to go. Happy New Year, Mr. Nick. This is an adorable character. I hope nothing bad happens to her across the series. Or maybe the Fey curse will strike her and she'll be accused of murder one of these days. Then again, I kind of... I theorized that she might have been part of a murder plot. I didn't explicitly say that she was. I was just going through possibilities at the time. Happy New Year. I really hope it'll turn out that way. We haven't even seen Edgeworth yet. Then again, they implied that he died, but we all know that, that, that that's bullshit. There's two games based on the man. He can't be dead. And then, uh, two days later, 9.12 a.m., Wright & Co. Law Office. 
Well, today wraps it up for this for this year. I hope I can finish cleaning this place up in one day. Ah, the Steel Samurai theme song. Hello, Mrs. Wright and Co. Nick, it's terrible! Ah, Maya, perfect timing. Things are terrible here too. Huh? The office is a terrible mess and I have to clean it up. What are you talking about? Um, my dirty office. What are you talking about? Listen, Nick, you have to turn on the TV. The TV? Now let's check in at the scene. Huh? What happened? Thank you. We're here at the Berry Big Circus. The Berry Big Circus has become the center of sensational murder. The scene has created quite a stir among the throngs of excited onlookers. The very... I mean, the Berry Big Circus? That's the circus we went to, right? They're saying that there was a murder. Yeah, they arrested him too. A arrested who? Max! They arrested Max Galactica! Not Maximilian. How will he invent dual monsters if he's in prison? A popular magician who can fly through the sky at will. And have a Boston theme song, apparently. Maya said he, she was a huge fan of Max. All right, Nick, I'll see you in two hours at the detention center. Huh? What? See you there. You've still got plenty of time to clean up your office later. What? <laughs> of course, Maya is the one who's like, come on, Nick, we have to go and take a case before the new year. Well, off I go. I also realize now that this is the second time that I think I think it's Maya that is the reason why we go to defend a famous person. Because in the first game, it was Turnabout Samurai, in which the Silver Samurai was accused of murder, and thus... What's his name? I think it was Jack? Jack Powers. And then the other one was Mr. Hammer. Well, Mr. Powers was accused of murder, and uh, because Maya was a fan of the Silver Samurai show... She, I think she was the reason we went and became his lawyer. And now the same thing. Maya's a fan of a famous person, and now we have to go and be their lawyer. Hmm. What are they talking about? Why did they arrest Max? You're asking the wrong man on that one, Maya. Maybe he used his magical skills to deal death with a sleight of hand. Maximilian Galactica would never do such a thing! Fabulous! What the young lady just said was absolutely fabulous! What a clever girl! Such a fabulous understanding of events! What if all this fabulous talk? Welcome to the visitor's room! It's Max! Nick, look! It's the real Maximilian Galactica! All right, sweetie, pick a card, any card. He seems very nonchalant for being accused of murder. He called me sweetie. Uh, Nick! <laughs> Time's running out, sweetie. Pick a card, any card. This one. Uh-huh. I thought you would pick that one, sweetie. The Ace of Hearts. Ah, he got it, he got it. Nick, look, he got it. What can I say, sweetie? You've come... S you've, you've stolen one of my most valued possessions. One of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. Max... Well, time to make this absolutely fabulous time. Max, you should let Nick pick a card. Eh, I don't want to steal one of his hearts. <laughs> and you are? Oh, how silly of me. You must be Sweetie's driver. Her driver? Whatever. Hurry up and pick a card, any card. Um, I want this one. So, Sweetie, let's be honest here. You came to this visitor's room to visit me, didn't you? Yes, I'm your biggest fan. Fabulous! Absolutely fabulous! Thank you so much! Hey, um, what about my card? Think about it as a souvenir. <laughs> well, Nick, I think it's time to get to work. What's the matter, Nick? Why are you looking at the ceiling? I was just thinking about what I should have for lunch. Sweetie, drop Porcupine Head over there. Show me if your attention okay. <laughs> oh, yes! This is a weird man! Absolutely fabulous! Absolutely cringe-inducing. As always, we shall save. And I guess may maybe I should present my lawyerly lo- Well, I guess technically lawyer. I present my badge. What is that badge? Was it used in a disappearing act? 
I'm not a magician, Max. I'm an attorney. An attorney? Then why are you wasting your time talking to me? He isn't wasting his time. Max, you're... Okay, okay, relax, sweetie. You're just a little over-anxious, I think. <laughs> well, Max Galactica. Max, I was hoping you could tell me a little more about yourself. Fabulous! I think we should get to know each other better, too. Why don't you come sit next to me? Um, there's a big piece of security glass between us. Oh, sweet Jeebus, what in the world? If only I could use magic, then I could make this wall disappear. What is this guy talking about? Anyways, lately you've become awfully famous, haven't you, Max? That's Maximilian to you, Porcupine Head. Get it straight. Jeez, people nowadays. They get their panties all in a bunch over nothing. Anyway, Maximilian, you won a very prestigious award recently, did you not? I did indeed! It was fabulous! I won the Magician's Grand Prix, held by the Association of International Magicians. The AIM. It's an award that recognizes that I'm the most fabulous of fabulous world magicians. There was a trophy and a bust. It was a fab... I mean, it was an amazing day. Wow, that's incredible! Isn't it? If I'm certifiably the greatest magician in the world! I'm gonna guess he didn't win a trophy for most modest magician. You're signed to an exclusive contract with the Berry Big Circus, correct? That's the long and short of it. You should do your research, sweetie. I'm impressed. You just can't watch a magician on TV, you know. Magic is so fabulous, you have to see it with your own eyes, sweetie. You're right. You're so right. I love the irony. Is it irony? I love the little funny aha that an actual lady who can do magic, channel spirits, is a fan of a performance magician. However, the circus, it's a dinosaur, a thing of the past. Nowadays, no one even cares about what goes on there. Huh? What do you mean? That's why I signed the contract. That's why you signed the contract? Thanks to me, the Very Big Circus is fabulously popular. People come out in droves to catch a glimpse of m the magic of Max Galactica. I revived the dinosaur that is the circus. But to me, it was just another magic trick. Isn't it just wonderful, sweetie? Yes. I made all the old crusty circus performances obsolete. But I kinda like the circus performances. Maya looks a bit down. Yeah, that is kind of hurtful, but at the same time, is he kind of wrong? Circuses are kind of out of fashion with all the entertainment we have nowadays even more so than when this game was first made. Tell me what happened at the very big circus. Uh, last night, the ringmaster was murdered. The ringmaster? You mean Russell Berry? Someone smashed him over the head, I hear. He was slumped over on the ground. Even though it was in the middle of the night, the police presence was fabulous. The police questioned me at length. Question you about what? About everything. I was the last one to see the ringmaster before he was murdered. I saw him last evening in his room. So then why were you arrested? Arrested? Don't make an anthill into a mountain, sweetie. They just wanted to consult with me on matters, that's all. Nick, I don't think Max understands how serious this is. She's right. I think I should shock him back to reality. Before the murder, you met with the ringmaster. Uh-huh. What did you talk about? Things that aren't for your ears. Maya, would you please ask him? What did you talk about with the ringmaster, Max? It was nothing. Small talk, really. We were just having a chat about my salary. Salary? I am the one bringing in the crowds. I think that I should be compensated as such. You agree, don't you? Yes. That's all you talked about? Of course! It was a fabulous chat! Jesus Christ! Three?! Three! Just fabulous. I mean, ah! Now he's got me saying it! What's the matter, Nick? You look all bent out of shape. Anyways, I've been curious about something for a while now. What's that? Why do you keep looking at me with such a sad look on your face, sweetie? Because you've been arrested for murder! Oh, don't be ignorant. They wouldn't arrest someone like me. Why is that? 
Obviously, because I'm the fabulous Maximilian Galactica. So, I'm the very big star of the very big circus. And that means I'm rich. I'm paid fabulous sums. Which means what? Max? Quit joking around. You've got to be pulling my magic wand. The police aren't really serious about all this, are they? They don't arrest people as a joke. Look at Max. He's crushed. Well, he needed to wake up and smell the coffee. This is serious business. Um, um... Yes? Pork you... I mean, sir, you're a lawyer, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm an attorney. Please, help me! I didn't kill nobody! Didn't kill nobody? I may be more spoiled than a hog in a hamburger mud pit, but a killer? That's insane! I... I could never... Max? I swear! I just wanted to pay off my daddy's debt! He's back on the farm! Okay, okay, I'll take your case. Really? Really? Uh, thank you much! Y'all so nice folks! <laughs> is he... Is he a farm boy who somehow made it big as a f magician? And became a bit spoiled? Um, Max. Yes? What's your real name? It's Billy Bob Jones! <laughs> okay, now this has to be a running thing with the, like, the unaffiliated case of, like, the... Or, like, I guess the breather case of the games. Because last time, she's like, that can't... <laughs> she said that Mr. Powers had to have committed murder at least once, maybe twice, because of how he looked. And now she's gonna judge Maximilian <laughs> because of his name. <laughs> What's the matter, Maya? He's really just a country bumpkin. <laughs> That's hilarious. <clears throat> I must apologize for not being my absolutely fabulous self just now, sweetie. Uh-huh. Mr. Attorney. Yes? A few minutes ago, you took one of my cards, didn't you? Um, now that he mentions it, I did take a card. It was the Ten of Hearts, right? What? how do he... he got it right again! What can I say? You two, you've stolen some of my most valued possessions. To the Maximilian Galactica's hearts! You sure do have a lot of hearts, don't you? <laughs> I'm putting my faith in you, sweetie. He didn't just call me sweetie, did he? All right, let's make this an absolutely fabulous case. Come on, Nick. I'm go- and once again, I am not going to fall for your evils, Cyclox! I'm going to wait around, get all the information that I can, and when I can't progress anymore, then I'll come back and do the Cyclox. I ain't gonna be bumpkin bumpkin. I refuse. Also, I really like his design. It's very anime-esque. The Big Berry Circus. We're here again. Yep, but this time we're here for work. It hasn't been that long since the crime, so the police are still on the scene. Let's find someone who might know something about what happened. Sounds like a plan. Well, let's search about, I guess. Look, look, it's Max! Even when you don't want to see him, poof, he's right in front of you. Sure, the sign says Very Big Circus, but looking around, it might as well be the Circa de Galactica. The stars on his cheek sure are dreamy. How would I draw a star on your cheek, Nick? I've got a marker. Nah, nah, it's all right. <laughs> There is a lot of Maximilian advertisements around. Those streamers do a nice job introducing the circus performance. Maximilian Galactica and his comical comrades. You know, you don't really seem too many streamers nowadays, do you? You're right. I haven't seen one in ages. Can't say I've seen that many either. I bet they stopped using them due to little kids climbing up to the top. Um, I don't think that was why. Hmm, this door must lead to the lodging house. No entry to unauthorized personnel. Do you really need to say no entry if no one's actually entering? It's almost like a Zen riddle, isn't it, Nick? I'm not even going to justify that question with a response. I bet all the stars stay at the lodging house. This is the box office where they sell all the tickets for the circus. They also sell programs. I forgot to buy one when we came to the circus last time. So then why don't I buy you one now? Hmm, sounds like a plan. 
Oh no, it looks like I forgot my wallet. If you want me to buy it for you, just ask me already. You know I'd never do that to you, Nick. You literally caused me to pay for a bunch of film back at the last official case of the first game. Nick, the entrance is right there. Maya, the circus is closed today. No clowns, no elephants, no shows. I know that. Nick, you can get your picture taken with Dolly the Elephant. There's no Dolly. Not today. I know that too. Oh well, I'll just have to take a picture of whoever I stumble across. Uh, it's not like we're here on business or anything. It's a snack stand. They have hot dogs, hamburgers, and drinks. Not to mention cotton candy and popcorn. They've even got snow cones. Who would eat snow cones in the middle of winter? Nick, do you think we can buy some snow cones? Look around. There's tons of snow piled up all around here. Yay! Wait a second! There's no syrup, though! I want syrup! Hopefully she doesn't notice the discolored snow in the corner. That's not syrup. Completely wacky. The very big top is so very bi en enormous. <laughs> yep, one look at the huge tent looming over you and you realize this is the circus. I know, I know! It really gets your blood pumping, doesn't it? I love when Maya's just like super excited about things. Oh no. Hmm. Well, I guess let's go to the lodging house first. Is that an air conditioner that's frozen over? This seems to be a dorm where all the performers in the circus stay. Really? So we might run into that stoogy clown here, right? He's so kooky. Ah, it's you two! Oh, that's totally the wrong voice for you. Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Oh, is it you guys always seem to know when I'm working a crime scene, pal? Because you're always working, Detective. Well, I'd rather not be always working, but with crime, you don't make your own hours. If I have to be at the circus anyway, I want to see the lion tamer on the tightrope. However, no matter where I go, the show is always the same. Dead body, stage left. Nick, Nick, he complained! <laughs> That's a rarity. Let's get back to business now, okay? Tomorrow's trial. Do you know who will be the prosecutor in the court tomorrow? Of course! It'll be Miss Von Karma! Uh, she isn't gonna hit me with her whip again, is she? What do you have to worry about? You only have to see her in court! When she shows up at the precinct, the sound of that whip never ends, pal. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure Miss Von Karma's really interesting and all, but there's someone else I'd rather talk about. Like who? Like Mr. Edgeworth, of course. You know, Nick's true rival, Miles Edgeworth? What in the world happened after I went back home? Mr. Edgeworth? You haven't heard what happened to him. Nick won't tell me! Well, to be honest, I'm not at liberty to tell you either. Let's just say he's not around anymore. He's not around? Nick, what does he mean Mr. Edgeworth isn't around? Exactly what he said. He's not around. Edgeworth is gone. Don't say his name again, okay? Nick? What happened? The ringmaster of the circus was murdered, wasn't he? Yep, last night around 10 p.m. He died outside in the cold. A pretty sad way to go out if you ask me, pal. It was rather cold. This is the scene of the crime, pal. The body was found right over there. <laughs> right over... right about where you are standing now. Ah! <laughs> Surprised you, didn't I? I'm not laughing! Excuse me, but do you mind telling me what happened to the victim? He was killed by a blow to the noggin, pal. Eh! It's pretty clear-cut as far as murders go. He was discovered quickly. But... But? There's just one thing that doesn't quite fit. Ha! There always seems to be something that doesn't quite fit. Something unusual. What was this one thing that just didn't quite fit? The thing you mentioned earlier. Footprints, pal. Footprints. Footprints? Alright, that looks weird. Look at this picture of the crime scene. What's this? This wooden box under the body? No clue, pal. Some forensics experts took it back and are examining it now. And, and, what's so mysterious about the footprints? Oh, <laughs> calm down now. Take a good look at the footprints in this picture. There's only one set leading up to the box where he keeled over. The victim's footprints are on the scene. That's right, pal. The problem is... The killer's footprints aren't there. 
Bingo! Where did the killer come from and where did the killer run off to? Were they on the, like, ceiling or uh, from an elevated position and threw something at him? But then the thing that hit him over the head would have been there and would have gone uh, been found or they would have had to make footprints to get it, so probably not. Obviously, there's no other way the killer committed this... There's no way the killer committed this crime while flying. A flying culprit? That's when something just clicked in my head. Are they really going to say Maximilian killed him while flying despite the fact that it's a party trick? There's no way! Flying is impossible! That's right. Flying is impossible! Absolutely impossible! <laughs> What's up the hollow left, pal? I meant nothing by it, pal. <laughs> Better state it. It means it, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Maybe I can get some info about Max out of him. Crime photo added to the court record. So maybe I need to present... The profile! It looks like Max is the most unpopular guy in the circus tent. You know what they say, a bad attitude follows you everywhere. Hmm, he's a bit arrogant, but he doesn't seem that bad. But just because someone has a bad attitude doesn't make them a criminal. It's not just his attitude. I've got proof, pal. Huh? He left something off the scene of the crime. One of his magician's trademarks. An incredibly well-made silk hat. Well, it does have very classy decorative elements. Silk hat added to the court record. Max uses a cloak, silk hat, and white roses as his signature symbols. Pretty mundane, aren't they? Who cares if they're mundane? At least they're easy to understand. I must have hit a nerve. <laughs> That's what he said. Who said? The eyewitness. Eh? Tell us about the eyewitness. Okay, I like that the game does that. That the game prompts you to present profiles to remind you that they exist. It's just the game saying, hey, uh, remember, profiles exist. They can be presented. They are an important part of the game now, man. And I like that. So about the eyewitness. <laughs> oh, you know I'm not going to tell you about that. That's the prosecution's trump card. Uh, oh, well. Oh, I just remembered. What? I forgot to mention that you two are barred from entering the lodging house. Why is that? Oh, no reason. Just something I remember to tell you. It must be because that's where the eyewitness is. Let's check it out. Don't you dare, pal! <laughs> that's amusing. So that's where the box was. This is the only place that the snow has been trounced upon. The murderer was sloppy leaving all these prints all around. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're the ones who left the prints. An investigation can be a messy thing sometimes. What? I also slipped and fell on the spot over there. The other detectives all got a good laugh when the prosecutor whipped me. Thank God there was all the snow around to bring down the swelling. It's great to know that the police aren't worried about preserving the evidence. This year I finally won an air conditioner! What? You didn't have an air conditioner? Did you ride your Triceratops to work too? And what do you mean you won an air conditioner? You didn't buy it? I can't afford one of those things! But I got lucky and won it as a door prize at the annual police Christmas party! They really pay you peanuts, don't they? Peanuts? I don't even get paid enough for peanut butter, let alone peanuts. Poor man! He is so poor! There's some evidence under the top over there. Hey, watch it, pal! The killer's behind that top! Ah! Oh, gotcha. I was just kidding. Ah. <laughs> what a mean man. The safety lights around the circus are kept on all night. So they should have been at the time of the murder. So we say the murder took place in the light? How strange. How strange indeed. Hmm. I don't get what's strange about that. Moe's. Oh. <laughs> and right after I named the last part Eeny, eeny Meeny Miny Fay because of the characters involved, now we have a Mo. Is he gonna be related to them somehow? That would be ever so slightly amusing to me. Before we go to Moe's room, let's go to the Big Top. 
very big circus, big top. Bitch, I'm not a bees. I like how the it's like Max Galactic, and then you can't read the thing on the left because it's just like, ah, oh, it's not the guy's name. The circus stage sure doesn't look this small from out in the audience. Wow, this is where they all perform, isn't it? Nick, do some somersaults! I'm not doing any somersaults. Why not? You look like you'd be great at it. Why do I look like I'd be great at somersaults? Arrgh. Huh, Nick? It wasn't me. Arrgh. Is it a lion? <laughs> it's, it's literally a photorealistic lion! <laughs> I, didn't ex I didn't expect that! T -t -t Tiger! He's coming this way! <laughs> Again. <laughs> Is he gonna be friendly? Or did he try and kill us? Nick, you're too young to die! Nick! Stay, stay heal! <laughs> Who is it that saved the day? I'm still here. I'm not dead yet. N Nick, Nick, are you okay? <laughs> I was scared you, didn't I? That is not at all the right voice for you. <laughs> that is not at all the right voice for you. Regent is such a cute tiger, isn't he? What's the matter? You two sure are quiet. Don't what's the matter, me? The Nick, he almost died there. Huh, he wasn't anywhere close to getting hurt, let alone dying. This little tiger hardly ever bites people. Hardly ever. And besides, people normally never get to play with a wild tiger, right? So if you think about it, you're actually really lucky. Huh? You agree, don't you? Why does that movement that you just did remind me of... What's her face? Miss May from the second case of the last game. I guess. What do you mean, you guess? Why are you agreeing with her? Woohoo, your costume. Eh? It's cute. I want to try it on. C costume? You mean my clothes? You don't mind letting me try it on, right? Uh, <laughs> she did it too! <laughs> really? <laughs> You're the best. Wow, the tables turned quickly on that one. So much for the tiger thing. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Regina Berry, the renowned animal tamer of the Berry Big Circus. And apparently daughter wife to the other Berry man who was the ringmaster? My name's Maya Faye. I'm a spirit medium. Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. When you put us up next to an animal tamer, I bet we really look hot. <laughs> nice to meet ya. Uh, likewise. What happened? Hey, Regina, what do you know about what happened last night? You mean the murder? Uh-huh. My dad was murdered. Oh, I see. Wait, what did she just say? She has a last name, Phoenix! Her last name is Barry! What did you expect? Cereal? So, the ringmaster was your... Yep, the ringmaster was my dad. I'm so sorry about what happened to him. <laughs> Why do you say you're sorry? Huh? Anyways, everyone was here practicing last night. Even your dad? Yes, everyone was here. We finished up around 10 p.m. After that, everyone went off on their own. I was the only one who stayed around here. Why did you do that? I was playing with Regent. Regent. So she was with that beast. <laughs> That's when the police showed up. When they took me to check things out, Dad was dead. For someone whose father was just murdered, she seems awfully perky. I wish you would tell us more about her dad. That's incredible that you're an animal tamer. If you say so. <laughs> Hi, so glad to catch your latest stream. And thank you for tuning in. <laughs> right now, <laughs> so far I've been enjoying the feel of this case so far. The characters and presentation has been fun. It has to be really scary. Scary? Why? Huh? Regent isn't scary. He's cute. Ever since Leon died, Regent has been my best friend. Who was Leon? Leon? Yes, Leon the Lion. Leon the Lion. Regent and Regina. Interesting name choices. Leon? He died? Yes, actually he was killed. My dad killed him. Is that why you don't care that your dad's dead? <laughs> what? 
Why did he do that? I'm not sure why he did it. It's tough not to get charmed when she looks at you with those innocent eyes. <laughs> yeah, some people say it's annoying, but I find it entertaining how ridiculous it is and yet also has some interesting depth. I can't wait to experience it for myself and rain judgment down upon it, as with all cases. Well, I guess let's present... Crime photo! Ah, she doesn't care. What can you tell me? Um, I'm not really good at figuring out hard things. Really? You too? I understand exactly what you mean. I never expected Maya to make a new friend in a strange place like this. How about hat? This silk hat is Max's. My one problem is the clown's difficult testimony and the slightly contrived murder method. Oh boy. At least I have a bit of a hint. Be wary of the clown and be on the toes for the murder method. I already ran into a bit of issue with the uh, blast burn on the bullet hole in Maya's sleeve from the last case, so I'll be sure to keep that in mind. This silk hat is Max's. That's right. It's beautiful, isn't it? I thought of the idea for wearing the hat. Huh, really? Yep. He took my sketch to the hat shop, and they made a custom hat for him based off of the sketch. There's only one of these silk hats in the entire world. Isn't that cool? And now I shall... I guess talk. When were you added to the profile list, little man? Little egg headed man? Honestly, I think the reason you look weird is because you can see his mouth underneath his mustache. Who are you? <laughs> well, let's ask about Max. It's Max. Hey, where is Max now, anyway? You, you don't know? Nope. He's been arrested. He was charged with the murder of your father. It's okay. Nick and I will help him. Max isn't the guy, is he? I mean, the criminal. Of course he's not. I'm worried about so many things right now. You don't look it. Hmm. Like what? <laughs> she doesn't elaborate. Okay. Let's ask about your father. After practice was over, Dad went right back to his room. His room? Yes. That door right over there leads to the ringmaster's room. Hmm. I don't know why, but he went off to his room in a hurry. I wonder what happened. The ringmaster's room. It's probably a good idea to check it out for myself. Well, we know that Max said that he talked with the ringmaster about, like, pay stuff. Let's go to the ringmaster's room. And then we'll go and see if we can find the eyewitness. That's a lot of trophies. Well, there seems to be a clown, there seems to be some kind of dude bro guy, and then Regina. Interesting that Regina gets, like, a big billing on that picture for the Big Berry Circus. And a lot of Maximilian in here. This is the ringmaster's room, right? Yes, this room belonged to the victim. Which means this must be where Max met with the ringmaster last night. Now that you mention it, this is what he said. That is what he said. I wonder what... Hmm, that's an interesting poster. Ah, it's a poster of Max! I want it, I want it, Nick! I want it! I want to get out of here. <laughs> I want it, Nick, and I want out of here. This is strange. Everything else looks nice, but this desk looks old and cheap. There's a really big photo on the desk. It's a picture of Regina and her father, the ringmaster. He really loved her, didn't he? Regina was lucky to have such a wonderful father, and yet he killed the lion... And Regina doesn't seem to care. Maybe she's an airhead. Or the murderer. The last airhead turned out to be a murderer. Did he have a fake mustache? I think he had a fake mustache. Over there on the table. You may not know this, but they call this a tailcoat. And they call this the face of someone who already knew that. Hmm. What? A scrap of white paper is sticking out of the coat pocket. Huh? Where? Calm down, Maya. You can't just go rummaging through people's coats. Aw, you always make me feel like I'm doing something wrong. I mean, shouldn't we take that? Plus, wouldn't that just be like a handkerchief or something? This is where the ringmaster applied his makeup. It's quite a collection of the collection of most understated colors. Shocking pink, for example. This one says it is 100% all-natural organic mascara. And this one says sensitive enough for a baby, strong enough for a mime. The ringmaster must have been really concerned about skin care. Very metrosexual. 
There's a lot of posters here, don't you think? There are indeed. So many posters that they aren't likely to miss one, are they? Maya, we're supposed to be the honest ones around here. But, but, you didn't even notice that I took one! Ah, uh, she already swiped one! Heh <laughs> You're incorrigible, you know that? I love their dynamic. It's adorable. If you could pick any weird pet, what would you pick? I don't know. I'm pretty a vanilla person. I like cats. Any weird pet. Eh, I'm not really interested in any weird pets. Not really. I feel like any weird pet you pick, they would just be high maintenance. Look at all the posters on stars on the posters. This must have been the poster they used to promote their public appearances. Posters are the way to go, aren't they? What do you mean? We should make posters to promote our law firm! Spine-tingling legal action! Mind-numbing legalese! You will say wow! Or perhaps, hold it! Don't miss out on the stunning life or death courtroom thrill ride! With those taglines, our law firm would sink faster than the Titanic. Hilarious, because I just listened to a uh, metal cover of My Heart Will Go On. <laughs> Nick, look at all the cute trophies! Indeed, just look at all the awards the circus has won. Like... All County Quiz Champions, Ringmasters Association Mini Golf Master, Beer Belly Balloon Bounce Champ, Pet Grooming Grand Prix. Wow, the Ringmaster was multi talented in ways I could have never imagined. Let's look at the pictures. Nick, look at all the photos lined up on the wall. It's like a guided tour of the circus's history. This is so cool! It seems like there were so many happy memories. Maybe we should do this sort of thing at our office. We can put up pictures of all the clients who have been found not guilty. And what if we had a client who was found guilty? Um, we'll just pretend like they didn't exist. How's that? Nick, now you've got me thinking about losing cases. Why do you do that? Does that mean that there's going to be like a... <laughs> is that going to be like a hidden thing about it? Where oh, all these happy memories and then it turns out there was a bad memory that was hidden, covered up by the, <laughs> by the circus. All of these frames look the same. They almost look like thank you cards. Looks like every year the ringmaster made donations to charity. To the Robot Clown Research Center. You're kidding, right? What? They make a they may be a perfectly reputable charity in the field of advanced tomfoolery. <laughs> uh I love it. This is why I like to click on everything. Humorous little things like that. And now of uh, the obvious important thing. The only thing that you can click on the bottom third <laughs> is the thing that looks important. Everything else seems fluff. Well, except for the poster, I guess, that Maya just swiped. That's a table for guests. There are some papers scattered on top. Ah, oh, look at this! Max's salary is written on this piece of paper. Yikes! What is it? I didn't know that a magician... The salary is incredible! She absolutely looks like she's about to pass out from shock. How much is it? How much is it? That much?! Incredible, huh? You can say that again. This must be the paper they used to negotiate Max's salary. The ringmaster signed and dated it. What's the matter, Nick? Max definitely got a raise. But this document is dated a week ago. Huh. He got an enormous raise one week ago. Then why would he go in to talk with the ringmaster about his salary? Increasing it. Then again, he could be just that vapid. And he'd be like, well, we've done a few performances this week. I want another raise. All of Phoenix's clients, including the prosecutor who assisted a murder or the annoying young police officer? Probably. Such is the wacky way of life. Let's double click it. This is the table used when visitors came to see him. Yeah, there's mud caked on the table. Someone with terrible manners must have put their shoes up on the table. Nick, don't even think about it! I wasn't! How uncouth do you think I am anyway? So yeah, either there's something going on about... Then again, was there is the psych walk. So more than likely, this is evidence to try and pry the truth out of the dude. I don't know, I'm... Uh, in my opinion, Maggie and Larry are both embarrassments to the law office. Also, I think you misspelled Maggie, but no, Maggie was pretty helpful, all things considered, in the last case. She helped me with amnesia, and then Larry did come and save the day at one point. So I think they're good.
Well, now let's see if we can find dead debt. Diddly D. I guess it'll be the clown, or maybe it'll be the strong man who we saw on the poster. Let's go to Moe's room and see if he is worthy of Binky the Clown's voice. I don't even know if that's his voice properly. It's been a million years since I've heard Binky the Clown. Happy birthday, happy birthday, whoop de doo Lodging house, first floor, Moe's room. There's a crack in the ceiling. Carrots on a wire. Eh. And big shoes. And a banana peel. Good for him. Yeah, fine. Credit where credit's due. Doesn't mean I'm throwing any bones for their personalities. I wonder if the, whose room this is. The name tag on the door says Mo on it. Are we gonna find Larry and Curly too? I guess he's not even... <laughs> is Larry gonna show up in this case? <laughs> As a clown? <laughs> we haven't seen him all game. He appeared quite often last time, I feel like. Wow, it's a real mess in here. My room's probably worse, though. Oh, well, I give up. We'll have to come back later. Or we can examine. <laughs> Clown equipment is so funny looking. He's got a balancing ball, a unicycle. He's even got a trampoline. But they're all broken. Maybe he was just a little too excited during practice. Who knows of that guy? Maybe it's part of the gag? I went to look at the TV. Look at the ceiling. It looks like someone punched a hole in it. How do you punch a hole in a ceiling? You're right. I wonder what happened. Hmm. I don't even want to imagine what goes on in here. Oh, because he bounced on the trampoline and hit his head. I get it. What the? There's a string of carrots here. How strange. The carrots seem to come in all different shapes. Weird. I can't tell if Mo just likes carrots or if he's using them for some sort of gag. All these clown costumes lined up like that. I don't know about you, but it's creepy. Look at the collection he's got. It's incredible. It must be a collection of clown costumes from around the world. Oh, I almost forgot. What is it now? You better not want me to try one of these on. I was thinking of starting a costume collection myself. I'll call it World Spirit Channels. We can display it in our office. In our office? As soon as you start paying the bills, you can say that. <laughs> This looks like my dorm from freshman year. <laughs> Where people threw glass jars in the walls and knocked plaster loose in the stairwells. That sounds like a freshman, like, <laughs> dorm room. Mo seems to be a voracious reader. Look at all the hard books he has here. Clowns for Dummies, The Joke's on You, Treat for Your Peons Right, and the classic Funny Jokes Are Funny. <laughs> wow, Mo is very studious. The Joke's on You, huh? Is it because he bought it? Is it because he b bought the book? Most an excellent pair of pajamas. Lay it on his bed in an excellent manner. What? Those are pajamas? You mean he goes to bed dressed as a clown? Ew. Awesome. Look at these shoes. They're great. Forget the shoes. Check out the great gag banana. <laughs> you sure it wasn't Mo's snack after lunch? Are you blind? Look at how many scratches they're all from people slipping on it. That is amusing. Oh, I just remembered. We forgot to look things over in the big, the big top. Because we got waylaid by Regina. We need to examine things. Look, that's where Max comes out during the show. You've got to admit it. That was a pretty cool effect. We're planning for, we're planning for me to start coming out of the line during the show. That's great, Regina. Yeah, I will ride on Regent's back and jump out and out of the lion's mouth. I want to try it too. I'll ride on Nick's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. Sometimes I wonder about that girl. The seats are kind of far away, don't you think? They are. They are, but it also means that a lot of people can fit in the big top. He's right. We can fit 500 people into a show. 500? That's amazing. Flying around above that many people is a real rush. At least that's what Max said. Ah, a ladder. It's just a step ladder. What's the difference? They do the same thing, right? I think you should just stick with the basic facts of the matter. Oh, uh, okay. It's not even worth arguing with her on this one. I think that's like the same conversation we had back in Silver Samurai. 
<laughs> is that gonna be a thing? Every, like, third case, tutorial case, first main case, second main case, the second main case is gonna be filler, and we're gonna have to talk about stepladders? What is it gonna be used for murder? Hey, it's a rope! Probably for tightrope walking. That's a bit strange. There weren't any tightrope walkers in the show when we saw it. So it's probably for Max flying around, I assume. There doesn't seem to be anything here that can help us. Not a single clue. You know, I've been meaning to ask you. What exactly do you mean when you say clue? What are you looking for? A bloody chainsaw, for instance. Well, there's definitely not one of those here. <laughs> I, uh, I adore these characters. I mean, if you haven't heard, the third cases are filler and all unpopular for the earliest five games in the series. I like them. They break things up and they allow them to do something fun. I, I enjoyed Silver Samurai, and I feel like Silver Samurai actually uh, filled, served a purpose because it broke up the main plot of the first game while also getting the player used to longer cases. We'll see if this holds up as well, so who knows. I don't really get the hate for Samurai, though, and it's the number one favorite for, uh, for my friend who got me into AA. I do. It's also really good. Especially because it's an interesting case that goes in twisty directions. Whoa, those lights are huge! I love lights! While you are sparkling, whenever I appear under the spotlight, everyone claps for me! That's because everyone knows that you're cute! No, I'm not cute. You're cute! Me? <laughs> of course, I'm sure you'd make an incredible heroine. I mean, she's not wrong. She is a, m a main character in these games. Really, you think so? Nick, do you hear that? Me, a heroine! What about you, Nick, Regina? What about Nick, Regina? Hmm, Nick. <laughs> He's no hero, is he? Ouch. Thanks a lot, Maya. These characters are funny. Uh, do you want to see this poster? You do not care about the poster. Oh, what's on your mind? When did that pop up? Hmm. Regina, what's the matter? What's on your mind? <laughs> I'll tell you, Maya, but just you. Ah! Um, well... What, really? And then... Oh my, that's incredible, Regina! Come on, Nick, there's no reason to pout. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Regina told me that someone professed their love to her. P professed their love? Not only that, it was Maximilian Galactica! Are you just saying this in front of her after saying that she would only tell you? I wonder how many people have stolen one of his hearts anyways. And then on the exact same day, another person professed their love for her as well. What? Who was it? Someone named Trilo. Trilo? Apparently he's a tenor who sings in the circus. Hmm, haven't met him yet. Regina seems to be quite the hit with the men in the circus. She must have some sort of strange power over them. You're not kidding. Two people in one day. Even I want to profess my love for her. <laughs> Me too. She's so cute. <laughs> Is she mind controlling people? Is that what's going on here? There's just something off about her. I want to say that she's the murderer. She's weird. Huh? Hey, Nick, look over there. What? There's someone over there. Excuse me. Mr. Bean? <laughs> Why do you look so weird and shifty-eyed, my man with a giant bow? Hello? Is he a mime? Wow, he sure is a quiet one. Excuse me! Well, ha, ha, me? No wonder she was so, so big on the poster. Then again, at the same time, that is her father probably making the final say on the posters. Kind of amusing. Yes, you work at the circus, don't you? No, I'm just your everyday average Joe. An average Joe who just happens to be ha hang out at the circus? I don't think so. Yes, I am. I've got nothing to do with what's going on here. He's lying like any regular person would hang around the circus. Dressed like that. <laughs> I'm an attorney. My name is Phoenix Wright. I'm a spirit medium. My name is Maya. Well, I um just happened to be um passing by. I don't suppose you happen to uh, be some kind of carny. Not a carny. I'm a performer, actually. I'm a v v ventriloquist. On... <laughs>
Are you gonna tell me that uh, your puppet killed the ring <laughs> ringleader? <laughs> Ventriloquist? <laughs> I I'm Benjamin w Woodman. Your last name is Woodman? <laughs> Yes, d d that's right, but everyone c c calls me b b b b Ben. Aha, yes, 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 that's your alias, right? I believe they call it a stage name. You're an odd little man, aren't you? All right, Woody. Let's talk. I mean, the Q is an orca later in the series. Oh. Ah, uh, this game is a circus. Uh, the, then again, we live. they live in a world where... You only have three days of trial. The court system is a circus. We cross-examined a parrot. Excuse me, Ben? Uh, yes, you mean me? About the murder, I'd like to talk to you about the details, if I may. W really? I'm just a regular normal guy. I d don't know. Uh, uh, this guy's so nervous, he's creeping me out. Nick, cheer him up. Just try and smile. Would you mind telling us something about Max? Maximilian Galactica. M -m 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 Max? He he's n n not v v very n nice. Did he just say that Max is not very nice? Oh, 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 my head hurts. What is wrong with you, dude? He looks like. <laughs> Did he mild manneredly get super angry and get an aneurysm? <laughs> You're not a clown. You're the entire circus. Ah, oh, Edgeworth. Way ahead of his time. Ben, so you're a ventriloquist? I, I, I'm j j just a r regular g guy. You already told us that you're a ventriloquist. Oh, y yes. Nick, don't yell at him. You can't do that. I can't help it. He's making me nervous. Ben, would you mind showing me some of your skills as a ventriloquist? W w well, I, I r r right now, no, now, my, 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 I, ah, he's contagious. Would you like to take a look at those papers? Would you mind taking a look at this? Uh, um, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I guess we won't need you to look at this after all. Hat. He does not care for the hat. Not gonna lie, when I heard this music in front of him, it terrified the wits out of me with the director on- Oh! I didn't even make that connection, but yeah. Such is music. Would you like to look at a dead body? He does not care for the dead body. Would you like to look at an attorney's badge? He does not care for an attorney's badge. Um... Would you like to look at Regina? He does not care about Regina. Who is 16 years old. Hat. Real name Benjamin Woman of Intruclist. Conversing with him is really tiring. Russell Barry. He does not care for about Russell Barry. Well, we shall leave you for now, I guess. Maybe we go back to the lodging plaza. Is there anything new? Maybe we show you papers. Hmm. Maybe the clown is in town? Well, something's in town. Let's see if it's the clown. Kablamo! Congratulations! You're the big weeder! The one millionth visitor to the room of one Mr. Mo Curls. Ah, uh, Curly, Mo. Larry has to be involved in this case. AKA, me! Earplugs must find earplugs. To celebrate this momentous occasion, would you care for an organic grape? Just one. Did you get it, my joke, right there? <laughs> I welched on giving you more than one! Um... No, no, no. If it was funny, it's your duty as a human being to laugh. People who don't laugh are usually last seen in Lan Sink. Catch my drift? I don't think I do. <laughs> um, Maya? <laughs> oh, great. Now he's contagious. This is like some Faustian nightmare. Come on, it was funny. Clowns are always funny in my book. 
In my book, they're just funny looking. You sure do have great tasting clothes, girly! Look at that garb! You look just like Greta Garb! I, I accidentally skipped over it. Bag. Uh, I'm going home. No, Nick, you can't! You know, I can excuse a bad joke or two, but this stooge keeps laughing at his own jokes. That's what I object to. Okay, okay, I get it, but you have to admit he is kind of funny. Uh, no, I do not have to admit that, because he isn't. <laughs> Phoenix even called him a stooge. Could you please tell us about more about the Big Berry Circus? It's a big, very big story! You sure you got that kind of time? And the hits just keep on coming. Uh, this circus has been in business for 20 years. We all performed under the guidance of the ringmaster, Russell Berry. 20 years? This circus is older than Regina. Working in the circus is never easy, especially nowadays. With movies, TV, and bowling, there's too much competition. But, but, I love the circus. I love it too. That's why I've been here for 20 years. We work hard to keep the show running. No one sends in the clowns on us. Nick, he just made a joke. Laugh. Har, 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 har. The ringmaster was a real big shot in the circus world. A real class act. Even when there were no customers, Russell would use his own money to pay us. Because he knew that I had a family to care for. He was uh, happy to take care of his employees. And uh, am I guessing that because... But if this place was, like, running on that kind of... Either that implies that Barry was flush with cash, and he, he was making a bunch of donations to a charity, apparently. So maybe he was just super, super well? Eh. I see... How could anyone do that to such a wonderful man? What happened? Mo. Wiggity, 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 what? Uh, uh. I'm sorry, Mo. Nick was born without a sense of humor. <laughs> Don't worry about it. How can you fault someone for being born that way? Let's talk about the murder. Um, uh, let's see. It must have taken place around 10 p.m. last night. That's when Regina said that they got off their final diddly D uh, training for the day. After rehearsals were finished, I was tucking out, so I came back here. After I went to bed, that's when I caught a peek of it. Caught a peek? Of the crime. Just as we suspected. This guy's the eyewitness to the crime. Russell Berry. The ringmaster was truly ahead of his time. He would always add new elements to the show. New elements? When you've been a performer for, as uh, for a long time, your act starts getting a bit stale. Hmm. I realize that even my act can get a bit long in the tooth. Sometimes my jokes can be a bit, um, old-fashioned. A bit long in the tooth? But that make-believer takes things too far! Make-believer? That magician! The one that thinks he's all high and mighty! He had the gall to say to me, You're one of those funny types, right? What does he mean, one of those? Well, the joke's on him now. On him? Yep, he got on everyone's nerves. The day of the murder. Go ahead. Nope, no way. Just forget I said anything. I bet he's still hiding something about Max. You say you saw the crime. Do you mind telling me what you saw? Well, the police told me that I can't share the story with others. Don't say a word, pal. I'm just gonna have to let these lips stay zipped. That's not fair. I guess you're right. Maybe I can tell you a few details. But only if you can get old Stiff Lips here to make with the funny. Stiff Lips? Wait, do you mean me? Nick, you can do it. <coughs> What's the matter? Just getting ready. Okay. Do you want to know why I, Phoenix Wright, am a great lawyer? Because I'm right all the time. <laughs> okay, that's a good artwork. At least his expectations are low. I wouldn't let him quit his day job. Yeesh, cut a guy some slack. At least it was funnier than Chuckles over here. It wasn't the greatest joke I've heard, but you did try, so I'll tell you what I saw. I'm sorry he's incapable of being funny, Mo. 
That night, once I tucked myself in the bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Once I heard it, I jumped out of bed. That's when I saw. Why is the Eggman flumped over? You stole that joke from Red White Phoenix. I thought it, the joke was that he was always wrong. Without a question, without a doubt, it was that magician! That's all I saw, but it just proves how terrible that man actually is! He knows more about Max than he's letting on. <laughs> yeah, but same idea. Russell! How could anyone do this to you? I... I... <laughs> Mo's taking this very hard. Hat. It's that uppity fake as uppity top hat! They found this at the scene of the crime, didn't they? That's what I've been told. Unbelievable! The jerk killed the ringmaster! It really is a shame what happened to the ringmaster, huh, Mo? It seems that the ringmaster was truly a great man. What do you think of, what do you think about this? Anything come to mind? Uh, you want some advice on your development as a comedian, right? I see, well, this is what you do. When you tell a joke, imagine everyone's wearing underwear and dancing the lambada. Uh, I think that's enough advice for now. Nick, he was giving you good advice. No, he wasn't. Don't be so closed-minded. Let's see if he knows anything about Ben. Ah, Ben. How's he doing? He's a ventriloquist, isn't he? That's right. Boy, was I surprised when they told me his secret. He's got a second mouth where his belly button should be. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Ben wouldn't tell me a single thing about the murder. Uh, that's a simple problem to solve. He won't talk if he doesn't have his puppet, Trilo. Trilo? If Ben doesn't have his ventriloquist puppet, he'll barely get a word out of him. Really? Hmm, master and puppet. I've been friends with Russell since even before the circus began. He was so selfless. He always thought about others before thinking of himself. I'll find a way to return the favor. He always took such good care of me. I wish I could have thanked him more than I did. How about the daughter? That's the ringmaster's daughter, Regina. Ever since she was a little girl, she's been watching the circus performances. Cuter than a little puppy Maltese, that Regina. If only my Lorena was that cute. Lorena? Uh, Lorena's my daughter. She lives with her mother now. It's true what they hear say what they say about the tears of a clown. <laughs> if he thinks he can kill the ringmaster, it's only just that he should die too! Mo! Sorry, I crossed the line, but he truly is a disgusting human being. Why do you hate him so much? Let me tell you this one story. The morning before the murder, something terrible happened. Max clonked Ben right over the head as hard as he could. Ben? The ventriloquist of the speech impediment? You should go to the cafeteria and investigate for yourselves. The cafeteria? Let's just say there's goatee... Goatee be something interesting there. <laughs> oh, yes. The very big circus is very big, isn't it? You should always carry a map with you to get around. Ah, thank you. Um, this is an atlas. <laughs> oh, I kill myself, really. I'm dying here. Coronary, coronary. Now he's just laughing to hear his own voice. Circus map added to the court record. Well, at least he was helpful. So there's the ringmaster's room, cafeteria, Mo, Acro on the third floor. Hmm. But all of these people are suspicious. Because, I wonder what happens if I say, hey, I know the, the clown. They're certainly a strange bunch of characters. You don't say. Well, not a stranger than you, I suppose. That was cold. I'm sorry. I was just messing around. 
so we need to find the map. Hard to come up with theories, huh? Mostly because we're just getting the information. It definitely seems that Mo is the most, like, invigorated over everything, but that could just be because Max does put on kind of an arrogant showboat attitude. One thing is, Regina is acting very weird. Regina's acting weird. Ben is weird because Trilo the puppet confessed his love to Regina as, where, as well. There's a lot of weird things and not everything is really nailed down yet. Apparently the big top man, the ringmaster, was a very good guy, very generous for 20 years of this circus, except he killed the lion for some reason. There's just like a lot going on and we need more information. Looks like violence, violence happened. <laughs> Does Max have his own frickin' little table? That's adorable. Ew, this place is gross. That must be because of last night. They didn't have time to clean up after dinner because of the murder. At 10 p.m.? Okay, this is good theorizing, I take it back. <laughs> There's just so much going on. But so far, the key information we have is clown robotics charity done by the ringmaster. The week ago, like, Super Ray's bump. So maybe somebody didn't like that the Ringmaster was giving Max so much money because they hated Max. Then there's also the fact that Regina got two love, like, confessions, Trilo the Puppet and Max. And again, the weirdness of the Ringmaster killing the lion. I don't think Mo is guilty. I think he's just hopped up on hating Max because I think Max is a good guy. He just plays up a spoiled attitude because he wants to, like, send money back to his family and he's kind of an idiot. That reminds me. What was it that Mo said? He said that yesterday morning Max clonked Ben over the head here. He also said that there's goatee be something interesting there. Nick, what's goatee be interesting? Don't ask. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. This is strange. There's nothing on top of this stand. Look here, Max is written on it. It must be his VIP table. Isn't it a bit small to be a VIP table? You won't be putting 10 course meal on this. Well, he could still eat hamburgers, right? Maybe he just never ate here, because also note, everything else is dirty except his, so maybe he'd never ate with the others. There are dirty dishes all over the place. Then again, he was here to clonk Ben over the head, so who knows. It must have been too hectic last night to clean up. You know, I can't stand a mess, Nick. I think you and I should clean this place up for them. But why do we have to clean up? One, because I hate dirty cafeterias. Two, because one bears repeating. But this is a crime scene. We can't clean it up. We have to preserve it for evidence. Ah, uh, you know, I really hate dirty cafeterias. Not as much as I hate cleaning dirty cafeterias. What's this? It must be a juice bottle or something. Uh, watch out, Nick. There's broken glass all over the floor. Hmm, a broken bottle just lying in the middle of the floor. Do you think it means anything? There's got to be something interesting there. Huh? Looks like we're going to have to go back and meet with him. Him? An orange juice bottle that was found broken on the floor. I don't know what goatee is. And then the sound all died. The kitchen over he is over here. Everyone must have taken turns cooking. There's a duty list posted here. I wouldn't mind trying my hand at cooking for this many people. Maya's killer hamburger. You'd try it, wouldn't you? So long as it didn't actually kill people. Keep our cafeteria clean. Doesn't seem like anyone read this sign, huh? Maybe they should make it easier to understand. Clean it or die. Well, that would definitely make them clean up. I like these characters. A uh, bulletin board for, um, bulletins. It doesn't look like there's any useful clues posted here. Boring. Maybe we should leave a juicy tidbit for someone to read. Juicy? You know, like a fake clue. Hmm, maybe something like, message from the killer. Give it up, Maya. You know Gumshoe would take it all seriously. Yeah, he would, wouldn't he? Looks like they left exactly on the night of the murder. They didn't seem to worry about cleaning up the dishes, did they? Man, look at all these dishes. It's making me hungry. Let's go get a burger at the snack stand outside. Once we're finished with the case. All right, then let's get this over with, Nick. Here we go. Whoa! Where's the mute button when you need it?
And I think that's all for this room. And the game says to head back to... Would you take a look at this bottle? She does not care about the bottle. Maybe if we show the bottle to him. And not to pull the ble fire <laughs> alarms at midnight. Yeah. Would this place even have a fire alarm? Where would it be and where would it reach? Would you take a look at this bottle? He does not like the bottle. Well, off we go, I guess. To Mo. Bottle. Nope, he doesn't care. Hmm, but the game... Oh, maybe we need to present it to... Hmm. Perhaps we need to present it to Max? I don't know. Let's see if it changes. Aha! It changes! Oh, it's my two sweeties! Welcome to the detention center! Uh, did he just call me a sweetie? Again! What's on today's agenda? What can I help you with? Well, we've gathered quite a few clues. Wonderfully fantabuloso! I mean, fabulous! That's why we came to meet with you again. What's wrong? Quit making such a scary face! Okay then, Max, let's make this absolutely fabulous! Let's see. We heard a lot about you at the circus, Max. Uh, you must mean from the dinosaurs. How are those Jurassic geriatrics? Max, you aren't very popular with the other performers, are you? Yes, 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 sweetie. That's what they are called jealousy. Jealousy. They are absolutely jealous of my absolutely fabulous self. People who truly understand can see the obvious differences between us. People who really understand? For instance, my sweetie pie. Hmm, so Regina understands him, huh? I plan on getting married to her. She's truly my sweetie pie princess. She is like, uh, five years younger than you, dude. And 16. Stop. Wow, that's so cool. It's already in the works. Oh? That's strange. Regina never said anything about actually marrying this Joker. You met with the ringmaster on the night of the murder. Yes, I was with him around 10 p.m. once I was done with practice. I went to his room right after we finished. They found the ringmaster's body in the plaza in front of the lodging house. Yeah, I heard about that. He needed to step out for a bit, so I waited in his room for him to return. Huh? Ooh, we get information. Sorry, Max, I have something I must attend to right now. And then there's the cloak and hat. I don't remember that, but then again, it was a different angle of the room. Do you mind waiting for me right here? It's pretty cold outside. Where's your coat? It's all right. I'll be right back. It should only take about ten minutes. I don't know. Someone six years younger than me once said she had a crust on me, but I just ignored it and assumed it wasn't serious. <laughs> True, but still. It's mostly the fact that she's 16, the boss's daughter. And how long has he been working at the <laughs> the diddly DIY wonder, the circus? I waited for him, but he never came back. Then he go to the plaza where the body was discovered? Possibly. The snow had tapered off a bit, but it was still very cold outside. But I have no idea what he went off to do. <laughs> this was when I was 14. Ah, huh, that makes... Yeah, that's probably not serious. Because it's much just like child things. Well, I guess let's show him some evidence, I guess. Can I ask you what to, uh, what, bah. can I ask what you do with such an exorbitant salary? We've already covered this point. I'm paying off my father's debt. How could he possibly have such a large amount of debt? For example, say you rented a video and perhaps you forgot about it for, say, a short period of about 10 years. You would have the biggest late fee known to man. It's kind of like that. Would it really be that much? <laughs> Sorry, I meant six years older. Oh. That makes it kind of creepy in my book. Hmm. <laughs> I had crushes on my teachers once, but I got over it. That seems... 
I guess normal. Because it's a person that you interact with a lot, but who does? Meh. It's not my area of expertise. Well, yeah, how would you... I really hope that's not your actual, like, father's dead man. He left his video late fee for ten years. Just run away at that point. Wow, now I can see how you can get that much debt. That makes sense now. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense at all. Fabulous, you'd like me to sign this for you? Uh, so he doesn't care. His hat? Ah, oh, this is my silk hat! It's the only one of its kind in the world! It's one of my most prized possessions. The silk hat proves that I was somewhere else. Where did they find this? Huh, sweetie? They found it at the murder scene. Ah! I, I, I don't know nothing about nothing! Ew, Max is so pathetic like this. Max must be really confused. He's like, ah, this will prove it. And then it doesn't. Let's ask him about Regina. Ah, my sweetie pie. She must be really lonely with me all cooped up in here. Actually, she was laughing and rolling around with her tiger. She is my special someone, and I am her special someone. Uh-huh. Very complex. What about the owner? Just between you and I, he wasn't a bad guy at all. I can say that for sure. That's the first time I've ever heard you say something nice about someone, Max. He must have really been a nice guy. <laughs> that makes sense now. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense at all. It's the perfect description of all Ace Attorney logic. Yep. I can't believe a guy with that ugly mug is after my sweetie pie princess. Especially after she has eluded my charms for such a long time. There isn't much you can do about that, right? Hmm. <laughs> you haven't even been truly in love, have you? Um, when you are truly in love with someone, you'd be jealous of their mirror because it traps their image inside. Aw, don't you think that's sweet of him, Nick? I'm gonna get back with my sweetie pie. Then I'm gonna turn that dumb puppet into a toy glider. I guess you two haven't worked out your differences yet. Uh, I'm too romantic for my own good. Like, Larry Butts, but more quiet and awkward. There's a character in Ace Attorney Investigations 1, Lauren Pops. Who I don't want to ad admit I relate to. Hmm. Eventually I'll get to the investigation series. What about this person? Unfortunately, I don't take on a princesses. I mean, just look at the face on this one. That's not what I'd call fabulous. That's awfully harsh. But at the same time, kind of accurate. Hmm. I'm gonna do one more rounds looking around for evidence. And she's among the most hated characters of all time. To be, fair, to be fair, she's in a silly case. Ouch. I wonder how you'd possibly get, like, the most disliked character... One of the most disliked characters things labeled to you. Forget if I showed him, everyone. Let's show him Mo. He doesn't care about Mo. Really, if anyone would be the most hated, I think it would probably be... Like, I don't know. It would have to be someone annoying. But I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Hmm, I don't think there's anything to... Examine. I'm probably just overthinking. You know, I could do every time I game over in a case. I overthink a lot of things in this game. Like the time that I theorized that... Uh... Pearl was used in the second case, channeling Maya's disembodied spirit while she was locked somewhere else, and then Pearl channeled the spirit, because I was also overthinking things. Hmm. I guess let's check the cafeteria one more time, and then maybe the game will replay the... Because I thought it meant... We should go back to Mo with that, but maybe that's just the game letting you know. Ah, the ev you should go and talk to Max again. I shouldn't tarnish your opinions, but one of the characters in this case is pretty hated. I think I heard that as well. Well, this must be a juice bottle or something. Watch out, Nick. There's glass. Hmm, a broken bottle just lying on the floor. Do you think it means anything? There's got to be something interesting there. Looks like we're going to have to go back and meet with him. Him? 
Max, I assume, considering that there was nothing else to do. Maybe the ringmaster's room. Is there anything here? Do -do 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 -do. I think I already looked over everything. Huh. A clown robotics, huh? Don't tell me that the puppet is the murderer. <laughs> like, the puppet is a robot and it's meant to be like Ben's... I don't know... Assistance puppet? <laughs> well, I guess the only thing left to do is ask about this again and see. When you make absolutely fabulous magic, it costs enormous sums of money. Sums that will boggle your mind. To name some of you, uh, you've seen, some people hate Dr. Haughty and Penny Nichols. Oh, and some say Prosecutor from Game 6 is the worst character ever. Huh. Like, Dr. Haughty is a creepo. Especially because he's technically not even Dr. Haughty. That's why you went to his room that night. Fabulous rays. I wonder how many people can lie with a straight face. But yeah. And I also liked Penny Nichols. I think she appears in another game later from my mild TV tropes uh, browsing. But in the case she was in, she was fine. And again, Dr. Haughty, I think he was amusing. And while, yeah, a creep, I don't think he was bad. But I have yet to play the sixth game, so I do not know. Well, I don't think there's anything else I can do, so I guess let's try the Cyclox! And hopefully not die horribly! Meeting with Russell. Last night you met with the Ringmaster, correct? To negotiate your salary and such. Exactly! We reached an agreement about the salary for my six-month-old contract. That's the truth. The whole truth? What do you mean? You just went to his office to negotiate your new salary. I hate lies, and I hate liars even more. What are you insinuating? Do you have any proof that I did something other than negotiate my fee last night? Well, this does seem to paint the picture that it was already done and dusted. Yeah, I thought these characters were good. I just think they should have uh, retired the Haughty joke by the time they reached Apollo Justice. Oh, so it could be an overplaying of Haughty. That could make sense. Th that's... It was on the table in the ringmaster's room. You weren't lying when you said you received quite a raise. Is there a problem with being well compensated? Not the compensation, just the date. This is dated a week ago. Max, you finished your contract negotiations a week ago. <laughs> Fabulous! <laughs> All right, I'll tell you the truth. That night, the ringmaster called me to his room. He called you. Why did he do that? Sorry, sweetie, that's private. The ringmaster called him. I wonder if there was some problems. Um, Max, perhaps you could share with me what you two spoke about. Well, not if I don't have to. Isn't this why the ringmaster called you to his room that night? The broken bottle. Isn't this why you were called to the ringmaster's room that night? But where did you get that? The cafeteria? You already knew that, didn't you? Uh, of course! It fell and broke on the floor. He's still hiding something else. Max? What is it, my sweetie? It didn't fall and break on the floor. You used this bottle to... Batter poor Ben. B ben. You nailed him over the head with this bottle, didn't you? Because of the goddamn puppet, apparently. <laughs> and that's why you got called to the ringmaster's room that night. F fabulous You might as well be a magician! That was the easiest Cyclock thing I've ever done. Granted, by this point, I've learned to not do them until I literally can't do anything else, but... Mm. The truth is, yesterday morning during breakfast, we had a run-in. You mean you had a fight with Ben, the ventriloquist? You could put it that way. Why did you fight with him? Ben seems like such a quiet man. We fought about my sweetie pie. You mean Regina? That ill-bred creep told my sweetie pie princess that he was in love with her. Would you put up with that? Ill-bred? Are you talking about the same Ben? 
told her he was in love with her. Are you sure we're, this is Ben we're talking about? <laughs> All I can say is that he made me mad and I had to tap him on the head hard. That's when the ringmaster called me and I realized that it was my chance. Your chance? That's when I went to his room and I laid it all out on the table. I asked him to let me marry my sweetie pie. What? The ringmaster told me that it sounds good to me. That's why my sweetie pie is my sweetie pie and no one else's. Ah, I see. Since Ben was causing me so much trouble, I realized I had to shut him up. Shut him up? You took away his diddly dang puppet? I would drink OJ from a brand called Juicy <laughs> Juicy Orange. That does sound like it would be an orange juice brand. What do you mean by shut him up? You don't know, do you, my sweeties? Trilo can't say a word. Not without Ben. Trilo? The puppet. The ventriloquist's puppet. His real name is Triloquist. But a puppet doesn't talk. I know! That's why I hid it. Before the police came and took me away, of course. If that puppet started flapping off at the ball side, be screwed. You hit him? You mean the ventriloquist's puppet? You are so smart, sweetie. Um, where did you hide him? What, oh, sweetie? You aren't thinking of trying to add him to my defense, are you? Well, Ben does seem awfully lonely without his puppet. Fabulous! That should have taught him a lesson! Okay, I hit Trilo in the ringmaster's room. You don't mind going there and getting Trilo for me, do you, my sweets? No problem. None at all. Thank you, Max. You know, I can't stand to see my sweeties in a jam. Then don't go hiding puppets. <laughs> I like this guy. He's weird. Is it me or does this guy give off a Johnny Depp Willy Wonka vibes? Nah. Willy Wonka was uh, more off the wall. This guy is more... Wannabe Maximilian Pegasus. Like, I'm trying to think. There's got to be a character that fits the... Tries to be posh, but is actually a country bumpkin out there again. Like, there's a guy in uh, Gra Greatest Attorney 1 who totally gives off OG Wonks vibes, but this guy's totally the Johnny Depp version, which is the version I grew up with. Technically, I grew up with both because we had both. Eh. Huh? Ben's not here anymore. Yeah, I wanted to ask him something. It's cold out. He's probably in the tent. Well, I guess let's go get the puppet. See if Regina's here. What do you think, Nick? I wonder if we've been making any progress. Don't be so negative. Of course we're making progress. But everyone loved the Ringmaster, and there's no sign of footprints on the scene. There's still a lot of mysteries left to be solved. Of course. And now Regina isn't here. I'm not seeing how that's related. Hmm. I wonder if Regina could have killed her father... Not only because her father killed her lion, Leon, but also because he promised her hand to Max. That would be weird if she actually preferred... No, knowing this game, she would have preferred the puppet. Not Ben, the puppet. <laughs> what if Ben worked together with Max to try and get rid of Trilo? <laughs> it looks like the same as always. A great mess. Considering how messy it is, I bet they wouldn't notice if another poster were missing. Will you just stop it, will you pil poster pilferer? I'm just kidding. You know I already got one of those posters. You mean stole one of those posters. Yeah, uh, let's focus on what Max told us. He said that he hid Trilo somewhere in this room. Trilo. Oh, the ventriloquist puppet. Where? Well, I guess, I guess in here, behind one of these. Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed, just look at all the awards the circus has won. Like, All-County Quiz Champions, Ringmaster Association Mini Golf Master, Beer Belly Balloon Bounce Champ, Pet Grooming Grand Prix. Wow, the Ringmaster was multi-talented in ways I could never have imagined. Hmm, there's something shoved under the bookshelf. I didn't even notice. This is... That's Trilo! That's Spin's puppet! I think you're right. We'll give it back to him later. He looks creepy. Why do I have to carry this thing? Because you stole a poster. 
Only thieves carry posters. Well, I guess let's go to the lodging area. Would you like to look at a puppet? She doesn't care about the puppet. Would you like to take a look at a puppet? He doesn't care about the puppet. I guess, do I have to give the puppet to Max? Well, I guess let's go to Max. Puppet! This punk, huh? Trailer was such a wooden, cheeky excuse for a puppet. I can't believe that this thing is what I'm up against for Regina's love. Ah, uh, my sweetie pie. Love only me. What? You're up against what for Regina's love? Whatever, let's hurry up and give this back thing back to Ben. Well, I looked all around. Is he gonna be back now? Wait a oh, maybe he's in the... I completely forgot to check the cafeteria. Oh, hey, Ben. Uh, um, uh, uh hello. Hello to you, too. It's awfully cold today, don't you agree? Uh, yeah, um, I d d do indeed. Don't you think it's cold, Nick? I don't see how talking about the weather is helping our case. Obviously, we're not going to get anywhere unless we give him his goddamn puppet. Here you go. Ah, Ben, this is yours, isn't it? <laughs> yes! Th that's mine! Here you go. Trilo Queest, return to Ben. All right, Maya, let's get going. It's that time, isn't it? See you around, Ben. Okay. So, Nick, where are we going next? Let's see. Maybe we should go talk to the clown. Hey, wait! Who said that? What are you looking at? I'm right here, you blind winch! What's your problem anyways? Don't you see how to probably grace someone? Ben? Is that you, Ben? No, 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 no! I would never! It was me and yeah, me down here! You, you're... Trilo? That is Mr. Quist to you, sir! Learn some manners before you just blurt out my name! Now try speaking to me again, but this time with some proper respect! Not again, uh, Mr. Queest, is that better? No, look at me when I'm talking to you, you ain't been excuse for an attorney. Trilo, we talked about insulting people, you... <laughs> is this literally the Batman villain? Where he has a split puppet personality? But he was mocking me! Not being mean to bullies was not included in the deal! I'm sorry, Trilo. Nick, what just happened? Trilo is still a puppet, right? A ventriloquist puppet? Hey, who do you think you're calling me a puppet? I kind of expected this, but at the same time... Tell us what you know about the murder. You talking to me? I see you talking to me! Don't look at him when you're talking to me! Trilo Queest, you behave, young man! Shut up, Woody! What murder are you talking about? You mean the one where they off the old man? I guess so. No need to make such a fuss about things. They all paid us all peanuts. Trilo, you can't say things like that. I didn't raise you to be that kind of puppet. Don't you have the nerve pills or something to take right now? These two are really an odd couple, aren't they, Nick? Okay, okay, I'll talk. Graves got clobbered over the head. I think that's the idea. Although other people think he's more self-aware and using Trilo as an instrument for his 31-year-old self to date Regina. Yeah, because that is a... He's literally 10 years older than Max, so that does make it a bit creepier. But it could go either way, because... Maybe he could have become so, like, dependent on his puppet. I'm just trying to think. Again, maybe the pu puppet is the murderer. Who knows? Let me lay... Oh, but one thing I was going to talk touch on... Trilo says that the ringmaster paid them peanuts... Yet, Mo said that the ringmaster would pay them even if there was nobody coming to the circus. Hmm. Maybe he is paying them peanuts, but he still pays them even if nobody comes? Hmm. But that would still also give them, like, reason to hate and want to frame Max to a degree. But at the same time, I guess it couldn't be the puppet actually being the murderer. Okay, double thought, but just a second. It can't be Trilo himself. 
because he was shoved under the cabinet, like, before the murder. Wait, no. Actually, Max said that he shoved the puppet under, uh, he hid the puppet before the police came. So there could have been time for that. But either way, maybe... Because hmm. I was going to go, maybe if Trilo was hidden and been, like, lost his composer in his outlet for whatever the hell this is, that he clobbered the old man over the head, but that still doesn't explain, like, the not-scuffed snow. So who knows? Let me lay it out for you. The pace sucks, the clown sucks, and my partner has his hands up my pants. Your partner? You mean Ben? Yeah, the creepy old guy who never finds it in himself to leave me alone. Tell him to back off from me, will ya? He's just another one of the dorks around here. Oh, my. But I'll be fair, in this cesspool of human garbage masquerading as performers, I found my Madonna. Your Madonna? Regina, my lovely Regina. She is stunning, right, Ben? Well, I'm not sure if I would go that far. You'll have to excuse him. He does not understand what of, of what he speaks. I, on the other hand, am an appreciator of true beauty. Hence why I shall marry her. B -b marry The ringmaster got knocked upside his cheap head by a flying frog. You mean Max Galactica? Why do you say that? Trilo, straighten up. Don't accuse people like that. Straighten up? I'm made of wood. Besides, you were there. You know what happened. You were there? <laughs> if you're that interested, then I'll tell... I'll let you in on the facts. You... You're going to marry Regina? <laughs> That's right. She doesn't quite realize the joy that awaits her, does she? I think I'm beginning to see why she seemed troubled. Well, she... I don't care. It's my choice, not as... Okay, <laughs> forward, little bastard puppet, aren't you? We're getting hitched! I know you think that, but... But what? I gave her a special gift. I gave her the wonderful gift of song. You gave her a song? Well, I'm a renowned tenor. You'll be happy to know that I'm decided to grace you for one of my songs. Me, 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 me. I want you to touch me. Uh, this is... This seems like a very forward song, little Trilo Puppet Man. The rest is private. Well, um, the melody's pretty good. But those lyrics, I think they need a little work. I think the... the, the I think the idea, although other people... Oh, yeah, I already read that. Show Regina's profile to Dr. Hottie. Are we gonna run into Dr. Hottie in this case? <laughs> Fun fact, in the Japanese version of Reunion and Turnabout, Hottie has a line about please bring Pearl in if she ever gets sick, but they had completely changed it for the localization. Oh yeah, because creepy guy perving on a super child. I can understand that front. Yeesh. Who asked you? I'm the artist here. Um, uh, thanks. Now that Trilo's here... Now that Trilo's here, does that mean you can talk normally now? Hey, butt face! Ah! You must be looking forward to tomorrow, aren't you, Mr. Ambulance Chaser? Uh... You know, it's time to get rid of the pesky magician once and for all! Tri... Trilo? Enough jibber-jabber! Let's get to court already! Uh, hey, wait a sec! Nick, what's going on? He's a witness for tomorrow's trial. Uh... I mean, I'm with Trilo. I can never understand the meaning of lyrics these days. Yeah, kind of the same. Depends on the song, though. Hmm. What in the world happened with Ben and Trilo? Quite a pair of those two. What? Oh, yeah, monkey. Is it Bubbles? Ooh, ooh. Ah! No! Ah! Is it gonna steal my, my, my badge? I'll have to head out for a meeting now, but it's been a great hour and looking forward to joining your next few streams. Sure thing, and thank you for sticking around for now. Hey, welcome back, Nick. To that monkey. Ah! My badge! That monkey stole it! What? <laughs> Mr. Attorney, that face is so cute and looks so completely dumbfounded. Regina! You! That monkey! Hey, no need to get angry, okay? But my attorney's badge! Don't worry, I'll help you out. Okay, if you say so. If I don't get my badge back, how can I flash it? 
By the way, the monkey's name is Money. Money the monkey. His name is Monkey Money? This is a wacky world. Money the monkey. That monkey is called Money? Yes. Well, the rich ape just stole my attorney's badge. Mind if I get that back? I'll see what I can do. Even if I have money problems. Eh? Whenever money seems something shiny, he takes it back home. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I guess I'll just have to find out where money disappeared to. I think that's your best bet. You should probably ask Uncle Mo. He might know. Huh? You don't know? Well, money isn't exactly someone I'm on friendly terms with. What? He's not really the kind of animal I work with, even if he does need taming. Oh, I see. Go to Moe's. Hmm, I guess it's time to revisit that kooky clown. Do you mind telling us a bit about Ben? Ben? You mean the guy that's always hanging around with Trilo? What do you mean, hanging around? Well, he was there when Trilo told me that he was in love with me. Trilo told you that he was in love with you? Yes, he did. Kind of cute, don't you think? He's so smart, and he's such a wonderful singer. I love him. But what about Ben? What about Ben? He's got nothing to do with me loving Trilo. Like sand through an hourglass or the days of the circus. Regina, you were proposed to, weren't you? Proposed to? Nope, that would be that won't be for a while. Huh? Really? That's strange, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, Max and Trilo both said otherwise. They said they asked her for a hand in marriage. Ah, but Max only talked to the ringmaster about it. I forgot about that. He asked the ringmaster for her hand, not Regina directly. So I guess Trilo hasn't asked her directly yet. What? He's going to propose to me? I'm so confused. How about you, Maya? Huh? What? Who do you think I should go for, Max or Trilo? Wait, wait. You do realize that Trilo is a puppet? Huh? I don't care that he's a bit stiff. Oh boy! <laughs> she is insane! That's Mo. He's such a funny clown. He's been a good friend to my dad for a really long time now. He was a good friend with the ringmaster? My dad always said, When it comes to who I can entrust a circus to, it's definitely Mo. Hmm. Yep, that clown is one lovable stooge. Don't you think so, Nick? Um, no comment. Ah, uh, that guy. His name's Ben, right? Huh? You don't know him? I don't know. He didn't really catch my eye. He's friends with Trilo, right? Wait, we're the ones asking the questions around here. You are one deranged individual. Let's quickly check the... Well, we, we were just here. I'm a fool! I don't want to talk to you. I want to get a move on. Double check here. Nothing here. Well, I guess let's go and say hi to Mo. Ah. So he's gone. Huh? Detective Gumshoe took off already. Yeah, probably because we ditched him earlier. I bet he and the other cops got lonely and headed back to the precinct. December 28th, lodging house, first floor. Oh my, if it isn't Mr. Right all the time! Uh. It's alright to be wrong every now and then, right? See, Nick, just took, it just took a while for the joke to find its audience. Uh. So what can I do for you? Do you remember a good joke you wanted to tell me? Pull up a chair, maybe just pull my finger and let me have it. We're gonna get the same sound effect either way, aren't we? <laughs> How do you know I put a whoopee cushion on the chair? You really know what it takes to be a clown, don't you? <laughs> well, I guess let's ask him about Ben. This is Ben. Is something wrong? He's a ventriloquist, right? That's correct. Boy, was I surprised to find out he's got a mouth for a belly button! <laughs> well, I guess nothing new there. Let's ask. So about Regina. Regina is such a pure, innocent child. She's such a cutie, too. She was born and raised in the circus, you know. But that means she doesn't really know much about the world outside the big top. So she's Circus Pearl! Great! That explains things. Yeah, just like I said, Maya. But every child's dream of the circus is her everyday reality. She lives in a dream world. She sees dancing wild animals, men flying in the air, and one very funny clown every day. 
The funny thing is, this all seems normal to her because it's her everyday life. I guess that explains why she thinks she can marry a ventriloquist puppet. Don't ask me if a reality is a good thing or a bad thing, though. A clown sees life simply without complications. Have you ever heard of a monkey named Money? Ah, oh, yes, Money! He stole my attorney's badge. Well, Money does love shiny objects. It makes sense that he'd swipe your badge. But under no circumstances can you chase after him. Eh? Why's that? Oh, I know. You don't want to get involved in any monkey business, right? Exactly! Bravo! Bravo! Enough joking around, though. Money isn't considered a member of Regina's family. Then who does he belong to? I'll be happy to take you to where his owner is staying. You mean right now? Of course! Shall we go? Should we go from now or wait a while? Well, let's go with Mo. Ah, so there is still another guy. Acro. Well, I guess, yeah, we took a look at the diddly D, so yeah. <laughs> this is it! What's wrong, Mr. Right? I can't breathe. Don't be such a wimp. You only had to climb two flights of stairs. <sighs> Anyways, this is the place. Acro's room. Acro? He's an acrobat. It seems like he's not around today. Yeah, that's a big pile of junk over in the corner. I don't think it'd be wrong to assume the Phoenix's stuff is over there, too. Just be careful and make sure you've got the right stuff. Thanks, Mo. See you later. And, mm, <laughs> he's added to the court record. <laughs> that is hilarious. Um, he's got a barbell. Look around. Everything he's got for upper body training. Wait a second. These are the same machines I see on TV all the time. Hey, Nick! What? I don't have this one! This barbell here is a new model! Don't overdo it, Maya. You don't want to end up a muscle woman. She's into <laughs> barbells? This bed is incredibly well made. It's almost like a maid made it. Even the laundry on top of the bed is folded perfectly. Nick, there's nothing unusual about that at all. It's how things are supposed to be. Can't a man respect another man for doing something said man cannot do? <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's, a it's a monkey calendar. Whoever's in this room must really love monkeys. Maybe a little too much. Wow, I just realized that the year is almost over. Amazing how time flies. It's been one wild year, especially the last part. Well, we still got one last person to help this year, Max. Hey, the net's ripped. Money must be prone to breaking things. He's hardcore. Um, the net looks fine to me. Do you only think that he plays basketball? I think so. Monkeys live life above the rim, you know? You're joking, right? You think the monkey has a proverbial game? Of course, the monkey doesn't fake the funk on a nasty dunk. Well, I turns out tail might be an unfair advantage. Holy cow! There's a fork and a mirror, everything's shiny. There's even a really cheap looking knockoff wristwatch. Look at this, it's a trophy. And it's really heavy. Nick, I found it, your badge, it's right here. I got my badge back. <laughs> back to my rightful lapel. Thanks, you really saved me, huh? What's the matter? Do you find something? Yeah, check this out. It's a ring. There's something engraved on it. From T to R. From Trilo to Regina? Is it off to court now? Well, I think it's about time we wrap up our investigation. Do you think we'll win in court tomorrow? Who knows? Even I can't imagine what kind of testimony will come out tomorrow. I'm guessing Mo will be a witness in court tomorrow. Mo and maybe the puppet. Don't worry, Nick. No matter what, we've still got a magician on our side. That's good, because we might need some magic tomorrow. Okay. That was two hours of investigation. We'll try to get a little bit through the, uh, the trial portion. But we might stop midway through the trial. Like, we might... Like, depending on how long the sections are. Good morning, Max. Max? M milk What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. It's a stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess... Nick, Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties! What? 
You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around in the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no one needs to fly today. Nick, what's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. <laughs> dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, um, I like the amusement. Now I'm gonna have to remember, uh, friend Zika's voice. Man, now the case of one! What?! Your Honor, get on with it! Oh, sorry. I just realized that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So? Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, Your Honor. He does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. It sounds more friendly. Uh, I wonder if that is our, to our advantage. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Eh? That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. <laughs> It did not count. Do you hear me? You must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero, zilch, and nada. I am not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a Von Karma to lose at anything. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. Me? Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like I'll bring her dad back. There, opening statement complete. Now let's hurry and wrap this up this waste of time. Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up here, now! Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Don't mention it. It's no problem at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the offense in question. At your service, sir. All right, detective. You may proceed with your testimony. Right into these. The night of the crime, snow was falling around 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. All of the circus performers were gathered up in the dip in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. The victim was found bent over a wooden box dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped the vertebrae in his neck. Harsh? My see. He was beaten to death. Here's the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts this into evidence. Time of death, 1015. Blunt force trauma to the back of the head. A blunt object, hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. I don't think we're at the point in the game where merely pressing will hurt us. But it doesn't hurt to save. Save scumming saves lives. Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't a, such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half falls on the ground. The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Ah, the snow. Let me see. There's got to be more to this. Eh, what's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe! What were the members of the circus doing at the night of the crime? Why would I need to look at the maybe the crime photo? That does seem like a decent amount, but maybe not a bubba bot and a half. 
but at the same time, it's hard to tell the intentions with this photo. Plus, it was also taken when the, like, guy was uh, arrested, or like they were investigating, so I guess that would also be part of it. I'm just trying to think. I need to look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Most of the circus performers would gather to the big top to practice their routines. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and staff were there. Regina the Animal Tamer, Mo the Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and his victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot Regent the Tiger was there as well. Out of curiosity... Don't tell me m Money the Monkey is the murderer! Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. <laughs> I want to, um, arrest the monkey. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was playing with Regent while Mo went back to his room tired from work. Ben the Ventriloquist went to the front gate absorbed in his own world. The Ringmaster and Max went off to the Ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately? Huh, that's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. As well as being lectured a bit on not hitting uh, Ben over the head with glass. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 1015. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 1015. Oh, um, okay, not a problem, pal. We've got a witness that told us how the whole thing went down. Oh! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm, all right. We'll just have to revisit the testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? Victim was hit as a double date as a doornail, a wooden box. That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box? Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? Huh. The victim was hunched over this 20-pound box. It boasts a small but strong lock. This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Contents. Do you mind telling us what was inside the box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, detective? Exactly what it looks like, Yana. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? There was only one little bottle in that huge box? I wonder if that was some sort of special meaning. A small seasoning bottle. Weird. The cause of death was blood force trauma that snapped the vertebrae in his neck. According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it's something that perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, no. I bet he made it disappear with magic. <laughs> well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're going to get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're going to get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Eh, I'm not even up to stand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up is such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. You must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Trilla will show up on the stand as well. 
Obviously, he can't talk. Why is he constantly hitting the man? Please state your name and occupation for the record. My name is Trilo Quist. I'm an employee as an operatic dinner. Excuse me. The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman, ventriloquist. That rope must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you for song. <coughs> me, 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 me. The world of law, exciting and daring. Guilt or innocence, decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. But what do you think? It had a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. It leaves something to be desired, so to speak. D Trilo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up! Just look at your nose. You'd think you'd have a sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I want to punch you in the face and off the chance swelling would help. You know what? Your nose is a reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What is going on here? Order! Order! I demand to know who the witness is! Don't, don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trilo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting testimony out! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now let's proceed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was only heading, only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. That's not much. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene? You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he had in his silk hat cloak and dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with the crazy get-up and his nose stuck up so high? Th that's enough! I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Mm, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why is that? Well, quickly save because of paranoia. You're absolute proof. Uh, silk hat? This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Without a question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for him the hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your pro prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Curtsy. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Okay. Guess she's the boss again today. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean, the clown. The clown? You're talking about Mo. Of course I'm talking about that old fart. He's so pathetic, I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. Once practice was over, he was nine-tenths of the way to Kayleen over for good. Poor guy. We didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being first place loser, that guy's ahead of the pack. Hmm. Then what happened? Once we got to the launching house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. Why the plaza's entrance? To do something. To do some thinking, of course. It was awfully cold that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking in your nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Mr. Phoenix Wright, I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. I'm a good funker. At least my teachers always said I was. <laughs> That's where I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I'm sure. How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup? Get the wax out of your ears, lawyer nowadays. You're like talking to a brick wall. Max's three-piece get-up. Jeez, could you get any more dance altogether now? Silk hat, cloak, white roses. Thank you. Nick, I think you should put a little bit more effort into preparing your questions. He was the only one heading that way. How could he, that punk, not be a killer? You saw Max and only Max, right, Trilo? That's right, and that makes him the killer. There was only one person headed that way that night. That makes quite a bit of sense, and makes Max one suspicious character. But shouldn't he have seen the, uh... 
the ringmaster heading that way. There's more to this than meets the eye. Ben only saw Max? Yeah, because it had, like, maybe Max did go that way, but he couldn't have only seen Max. He had to have seen the ringmaster. That's a bit strange, don't you think? What strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? But where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose the witness could have seen? Oh, you know, the victim. That's the victim! That's correct. If Trailer was at the entrance of the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Ah! Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Before the witness could have seen him, anyone else could have figured that out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant a likely story? If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he just as the witness stated at the scene of the crime? Ah, I see. It seems at this stage that I have no reason to doubt the witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. Except again, you should have seen the ringmaster. He's right, but he isn't. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now let's move along to testimony. Mm, Trailer wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of the bitter love triangle of Regina, which is probably why Max cooked, <laughs> conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know anymore! We should practice, or why you have to tend with... We have to... Let's press on that, I guess. Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, I think it was around, I'd say, a bit after 10.30 p.m., I think. Practice ended at 10, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, 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 I guess that sounds a bit right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big nose dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in the weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. W what? Who said we were waiting for someone? <laughs> just really get him angry. Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can all do without your offhanded theories. But this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm on to something. Mr. Wright, who do you suppose the witness was waiting for in the cold of the night? Definitely not, definitely not, definitely not, definitely not, definitely not. He was already gone. Honestly, I'm gonna say Regina because... Because obviously Trilo has a thing for Regina, and if, even if... So yeah. I do believe it would be Regina because he would be waiting for her to go to her room maybe? And waylay her? I don't know, but... I feel like this works. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tainer, Regina. Wah! You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I, um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw. Don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Eh? All right. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Ah! That was too fast. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than Max heading to the scene. Ow! There's absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for an animal tamer. Um, um... I guess you got me. All right, all right. I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true. I was waiting for Regina. Pain! Don't volunteer things. 
Mr. Twist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the loggy lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think the humans have a monopoly on marriage? That the matter of public marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge! I mean, look at your horrible outfit! More pain! Hmm. Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. This is hilarious. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Do I have to press on that and then be like, surprise, I have your ring. You are going to propose you a puppet. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her too. Exactly. His honor is looking less honorable right now. This is a weird case. Okay, Mr. Reich, please continue with your cross-examination. Uh, what was it, that sigh at the end? Great, now he's thinking about a 16-year-old. Or the puppet. Don't be so surprised I was going to propose to Regina. By proposal, you mean proposing marriage, correct? To Regina. Of course, that's what I meant. What kind of stupid question is that? I wasn't going to propose that we become some sort of outlaw biker gang together. Right, Ben? Uh, yeah. Got it? That's the truth. I even had something to give to her. And what was that? What was it exactly that you planned to give to her? You know exactly what I was going to give him, numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question. What was it? You're gonna die when you hear it. It's an engagement ring. An engagement ring? Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix Wright's jokes has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Francica's whip looks like he's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. <laughs> Push on anyway. It may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever proposed to a human. Ow! I advise you cut this argument short. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bathrobe. <laughs> this is such a weird case, I love it. I plan on giving it an engagement ring. Engagement ring? Uh-huh, it's actually a diamond shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina's going to love it. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's got to be something I can catch him on. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to give it to her. Whose pocket was the ring in? Mine, of course. This is a stupid question. You've got to be kidding. You think Ben could pull that off? I I'm so sorry. Really? You don't have to apologize for that. He's the one who should be apologizing. Really? Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present to her. So you went to the lodging house to give it to her? It's right. I tried to give it to her during practice so many times I lost count, but that uppity snob kept getting in the way. Uppity snob? How could it possibly be talking about me, Maximilian Galactica? When I get a hold of him, I'm gonna saw his wood block in half, and not with magic! Well, they always say the love creates rivalries. So what about this present? Hmm. He says he still has it in his pocket, so I'm going to say, psych, bitch. I have it in my hand. Trilo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh, looks like they're going to double-team me now. Do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's, that's, that's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said, in the end, it wasn't able to give it to her. So I've still got it in my pocket. 
Why then do I have it right here? Ah! What's going on here? That's that's Ben. Say something. Uh, don't put on me. Don't put me on the spot like that, Trilo. I found this in Money's room. M Money's room? You mean a room they put money like a bank vault? Ah, that filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Queen, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey, in every sense of the word. Ah, I see. Well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things he can find and gather them up. Shiny things? Trilo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was that time, you know, that night, the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right up, right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might, um, be able to say that. The ring might have, well, it could have been taken around that time. <laughs> oh, yo! Why would the puppet think that it was still in his pocket then? The hell? Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever. There's nothing to do with anything, especially not with who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Now, Trilo, back to the topic at hand. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trilo Queest. I'm trying to think what kind of contradiction would this lead to. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trilo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring snatching monkey. I highly doubt that. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. When he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove important point? What point could that possibly be? Hmm. Ben doesn't exercise enough. Obviously, it has a flaw. There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. C contradiction The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance of the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix, right? Were you going to... Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Objection. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Objection. Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He's blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get that dog face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him. No about him, doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw that night. I've told you so many times, you'd think you'd know my story's not changing. You already changed your story, stick boy. I'm sure it will change some more. Where there's one lie, there's usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep going after him. Yeah. All right, let's go again. This will be interesting. I'll give you what I was waiting for that night for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max on the plaza that night. He showed up after I had been waiting for there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Hmm. 
so that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right, money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. The money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him. How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived at the scene in the five-minute stretch. Mr. Wright, would you proceed with your cross-examination? The timing is very important. If it ended at 10, he went and guided Mo to his room, went back, saw Max go to the lodge, chased the monkey for five minutes. I just feel like the timing here is important. Hmm. Well, we'll just have to see -dily see I'll give you that I was waiting that night for Regina. We'll press on everything. So you were only concerned with waiting for Regina that night. That means you probably wouldn't have noticed that someone slipped by. You should think about how many eyes I actually have. I've got four, you know. Four, F-O-U-R. Counting Ben, of course. With that many eyes, do you really think something would have slipped by me? Four eyes is an awful lot of attention directed at one area, I suppose. Yikes, the judge is even more dangerous to our case than a trio. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. So you saw Max coming out of the big top that night? Of course, it's where I saw him coming from. I was staring at the entrance of the tent the entire time. I guess that makes sense, especially since he was waiting for Regina. Quickly save. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. So let's assume that guided Mo to the lodging and went back. That took five minutes. He waited five minutes, so it's 10:10, 10, 10, and then he chased after the monkey for five minutes. This is like, I feel like this is all very important. About what time would you say these events took place? You're one of the dumbest people on the planet if you can't figure it out yourself. You already know that practice is finished promptly at 10. And you already know that I went to the lodging house right after practice. You don't need a brain surgeon to know around the time it was when I saw him. Just add 10 more minutes. I'm sure you can do that. Now, what time was it? Indeed. What time was it? Hmm, what time was it? Let me think about that for a second. Ow! I'm no good at math. Uh, it was 10, 10 p.m. Oh, yes, that sounds about right. It sounds about right because that's the time that I saw Max on the scene. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You've got some nag? Let me guess, it's not it, Trilo. You say good evening at night. Uh, I'm sorry, Trilo. Mr. Queest, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist act inside the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes his performances. You should know better. There's got to be something wrong. Hmm. There is something weird here. Because... They don't they hate each other. He Max bashed him over the head. So would it be evening greeting? Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother give, going being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your coworkers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a coworker, I would understand. Ow! That hurt. Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips stop flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back at grade school. There's no reason that Trilla would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I go about proving that for evidence? Bluffing is everything in this world. But I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. I'm going to assume that on that one we present, like, the broken bottle. Because, I mean, that's what he bashed his head over with, so... I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. No, you saw him heading to them. You are 100% absolutely sure of what you just said. I told you already. Jeez. I'm 100% absolutely certain. There's no way he could be any more confident than that, right? There's no way I could make a uh, mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Those three ridiculous symbols, huh? 
Out of curiosity, exactly how many times have you asked that question by now? If you're gonna ask again, I'll answer with a chorus. Everyone together now. Silk hat, cloak, white roses. Thank you very much. Maya, you didn't have to join in, did you? But it's fun shouting with everyone else. There's also has to be a hole in his testimony somewhere. I agree, but do we have proof to make something stick? All we can do is try, right, Nick? We've got to have something that will prove useful. All right, time to go to work. Let's see. I said good evening, broken bottle. Trilo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal, it was just an argument. A disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. Ah! That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? B what? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Ouch! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant witness had a huge fight. There's also, there's absolutely no way they would have had suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on stand. There's no way a puppet of this lewd would just go up and say good evening to his rival. Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to flame the, frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, I, I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Queest. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? Who did he actually see that night? Hmm. Because I don't think it would, he would mistake the ringmaster for it. Well, hmm. It could be he didn't see everyone or he saw a different person. Hmm. Because he could... But he wouldn't have... Would he have uh, gone this hard on saying that he saw someone? Hmm. Actually, come to think of it, he was super certain that he said good evening. So it's possible that he did see somebody go by and he said good evening to them and it just came out naturally as part of his testimony. I'm going to say he saw a different person. It is my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. Exactly. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. What? If he had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there is only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trilo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Ah! Uh, what in the world do you... Would the defense kindly explain who it was Trilo saw that evening, then? Couldn't be you, couldn't be you. You were waiting for her, and you already put him to bed. That leaves him. Because he hated Max and wouldn't greet him. Ben is there, so he wouldn't greet Ben. He was waiting for Regina, so he wouldn't say hi to her. And he didn't know that he didn't have his ring. Wait. That is kind of that that's kind of a plot hole where he's super sure that he already had his ring, but he also admits that the ring was taken. And he was so it has to be Russell. Considering the ill temper of this witness, there's only one person he would greet. It must be Regina! It's Regina, right? She's so cute! No, Your Honor, it's not Regina. If it was Regina, Trela would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah. I suppose you've got a point there. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. <laughs> the person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trilo, isn't that correct? Well, answer the question, Mr. Queest. Order! Order! How do you respond to this? Oh, 
wait a second. Well, at first I thought it was the old man. But, but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. But then he would have said that. You should have just said that. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Queest obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica? Or was it the ringmaster one, Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? All right, this is getting old. Come on, man, you've got to remember them by now. Here we go again. Everyone all together now. Ow! Yes, yes. <laughs> we know, the silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and cloak. Anyone would wear them. They even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss Von Karma. Do you have a clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we finally won a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. Huh? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix, right? What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer that, to that question and evidence that clearly states that there is no other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. Very well. The court will take a ten-minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare their next witness. Court is now in recess. Well, that's the perfect time to take a break. Because we've been going for nearly three hours now. And we made it through a whole uh, section. And this allows us to uh, begin the next stream that of Phoenix Wright with apparently the wonky weird clown testimony. Because uh, I do think I remember in a previous stream someone saying that there was wonky testimony in this one. And then chat today just said that the clown's testimony is the most wonky. So that'll be fun. But so far, I've really enjoyed Turnabout Big Top. It has fun characters. It has a wacky setup. It's enjoyable. So far. Uh, I don't think we're anywhere nearer to proving who did it. And I'm not like super charged on any single person. Honestly, because here's the thing. The things of, of the thing is why was Russell carrying a 20-pound crate with pepper in it? That's a question. And then somebody came up behind him and hit him with so hard with a blunt object that it cracked his vertebrae and he slumped over the box and they did this without leaving any prints in the snow. Hmm. And according... Um, and so far, all we've established is somebody in a coat wearing the silk hat passed by Trilo and Ben... And later the clown will say that he saw someone in the cloak and hat standing next to the dude's corpse. But we'll be able to present the photo saying, hey dude, nobody else disturbed any snow, you're full of it. But we have also haven't, like, noticed the... We haven't talked to or brought up the acrobat. He might be... In There was a pole. And there was rope, despite there being no tightrope act. So maybe the acrobat 
killed the dude? I don't know. We'll deal with it next time. But so far, Turn Em Up Big Top has been an amusing diversion. Granted, I don't think that there is a big overarching thing yet. Like, I don't think there's been any, like, set up for an overarching final thing. It, actually, there is kind of an overarching final thing. We don't know what happened to Edgeworth yet. He's obviously not dead. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hmm. But yeah, I'm enjoying this. And so far, figuring things out hasn't been terrible. So it's kind of a bit better than the the uh, Turnabout Reunion. Because I haven't been caught up on the Blast Burn yet. But I have been warned that there is a bit of funkiness in here. So I need to pay attention to stuff more. But yeah, this was much fun. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. For edited content, there's Neon Icy Wings. I swear videos will come eventually. I also have the streaming channel, Neon Icy Games, that I stream to, as well as post all the streams of past streaming to as well. So if you want to watch my previous series like Undertale, the Mass Effect Trilogy, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Blue Rescue Team, just a whole bunch of games. You can find them there. And if you prefer to watch me play games live from Twitch, you can find me at twitch.tv slash neonicywings. And then if you want even more from me, like art similar to my little character in the corner, you can follow me on various art websites like DeviantArt, Twitter, Tumblr, Newgrounds, and Inkblot. And you can find links to those in my link tree, which should be found in bios, link places, and descriptions of all kinds. And it should be linktr.ee slash neonicywings. But yes, but yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.